Is this the best film SLR for under $40? Back in 2004, I thought I'd have a go at photography. I walked into a shop with a small budget and saw this posh looking film SLR camera. I can't remember the price, but it was probably around less than £200. I remember the first photographs I took with it. Many are on a collage on the wall. With digital booming back in 2004, this camera lasted a year with me and I probably only shot a handful of film with it. I sold it about a year later for £50 and went digital with a Nikon D80. But the question is, is this the best film SLR for under $40? <laughs> that bloody intro took me ages I hope you enjoyed that guys this video is going to be about this camera here the Minolta Maxim 50 that I got on eBay recently I won it on a bid auction for 20 quid how bad's that do you know what I mean in this day and age with film cameras just rocketing 20 quid I thought blimey what a bargain I had one of these back where well, it was the I think it was the Dynex 40 I had back in 2004 one of the, well it was the first film camera or, or SLR that I'd bought uh, for myself to play around with but you know it just made sense with digital coming through about a year or so later I sold it and went um, digital so I could learn photography um, back in the day but uh, this little camera 20 quid you can't you know SLRs now are becoming stupidly expensive online we all know that and in fact if I go back to some of the ones that I bought um, years back this was this cost me 10 quid I got this uh, locally for £10, this Pentax. The woman wanted 20 quid. The mirror didn't work, and I didn't know if it was going to work or not, so I offered her 10 quid. She took it. I took it home. Pentax Spotmatic F. This was the first film camera that I got when I started getting back into film, which I think I paid 30 or 35 quid for. It's the Nikon F90X. That came with a Sigma... Um, I, can never, I can never remember the name of this lens. I've got so many lenses. Uh, 20... I can't bloody see now. I'm going to get my glasses on. I hate wearing glasses, it drives me mad. 28 to 135 macro lens, um, this little Sigma. So this Nikon came with that for 35 quid back then. I don't know what they are now, they're probably silly money. Um, and then when I got into medium format, uh, this was the first medium format camera I got, the Zeiss Icon Netar. This only cost, oh, this cost me 50 quid at the note, but it didn't, uh, 70 quid. I don't know anyway, but that one broke and I bought another one uh, for 20 quid. So this medium format camera here, the 6x6, as I icon that, it cost me £20. But the prices of cameras are going stupid now and we all know that. And I think a lot of beginners out there need to sort of look at, they're looking at all the Canon A1s and the Pentax K1000s, all the usual suspects that, that are quite expensive. But I want to know how this little baby works. Um, it's, it's <laughs> look at it, it's proper cheap. It's so lightweight, it's silver, and as my mate Ian said, it's a little bit bling. But it's got all the functions that you'd expect from any other decent SLR. It's got aperture priority, shutter priority, program mode, and manual mode as well. It's an autofocus lens, 28 to 100 mil. It's got bracketing mode, it's got a self timer, it's got a little pop-up flash as well. Look at that, that works. It's got four, at least I think it's four, four different focus points as well. And the shutter speeds go from two thousandth of a second all the way to bulb mode. And I've already checked the light meter inside this camera with my DSLRs and my light meter, and it's flawless. It works jiggity-boo. So uh, it goes up to 6,400 ISO in here. And I had to read up, I think the frame rate is 1.7 frames per second when, you, when you're firing off the shutter. The only thing I noticed is the autofocus isn't that, isn't that quick. But uh, the, the if you bought one of these little cameras, the lens mount is called an A-mount lens. And there's plenty of A-mount lenses on eBay. I believe that Konica Minolta, I think it was Minolta, and then it was Konica Minolta, and then so they bummed off all their uh, camera stuff to Sony. So a lot of Sony's earlier cameras used the A-mount system. So if you've got Sony, some of those older stuff, um, I don't know, pre-2015, maybe 14, uh, they would have been using the A-mount uh, lenses, which would probably more than likely fit on this camera. I don't know, because I haven't got any, but um, that's what I've read. So this is an A-mount lens, but there's plenty on eBay uh, to, to pick up for, you know, for a song. But I seem to have had a right bargain here and it all seems to work nicely. So let's get out on location. I'm going to take some shots and uh, show you guys some of the scans that I take with this or some of the images that I take with this camera using all row 100 film. And I'm also going to go in the dark room a little bit later on and I'll make a couple of prints and uh, see how they look on paper. <laughs> It's 
So I've had to stop the video. It's night time now, and uh, I've been out on the shoot. I came back and I developed my film, and I've all come out overexposed. I was like, I couldn't understand it. I developed in Rod Nile one part of the 25, like I normally do with Rod Nile for Oro film. There's no problem there. I know that the camera's light meter is working because I said, like I said before, I've tested it out. But um, I thought, what else could it be? I thought, well, I'll have to check the ISO settings that I put into the camera. Now, I know that 100% I put in ISO 100 as per the film. But when I got back and looked after the developing, looked at the uh, ISO values on the camera, they'd somehow slipped to 25. And I noticed earlier on in the video that when I'd loaded the film, the number 25 came up on the display. So even though I'd set the ISO at 100 and put a film in without a DX code, the camera's automatically selected 25 for me. And I put another film in without a DX code and it done the same thing. But I'll show you the photographs, but there's no test for this camera. I'm just going to have to go out and show you some better photographs with this camera. Uh, I'll show you the ones that I took so far, overexposed by two stops. But um, And then in the morning, I'm going to go out and take some new photographs with this camera. This is going from bad to worse. So I came back from that shoot, luckily I had two films, but I came back from that shoot, uh, from shooting the T-Max 100, and I developed the negatives, this time 510 Pyro. Everything was going nice, but I noticed there were some leaks on the film itself. I was like, oh no, the camera's leaking light. So I had a look at the seals. They looked all right. I thought, okay, well, maybe there might be a problem with the uh, film itself. This stuff was given to me by a friend, T-Max 100. It's got a film photography project written on it. Um, looks like it's been rolled from a bulk. And I've got those strange leaks going along certain frames. I then went off and shot another roll that I had in my pocket, which was uh, the Kodak Double X film. And that one's come out fine with no leaks. Same setting, same sunshine. So I'm sure the camera is all... Uh, is all, I'm sure the camera's mustard, you know? I just got a feeling there might be something wrong with this film. This, this video's going from bad to worse. on safari park no bloody cows in the road I've got a photograph at all closest I've ever been to a cow <laughs> rock on So I got a message in one of my comments the other day about uh, a place called Braiding Down and there's a monument there and the guy said he used to come here when he was a kid, blah blah blah, he said have you got any photographs of the monument? And I've never actually, I don't think I've taken a photograph of the monument, I've never found it that interesting but nostalgic reasons I suppose I can understand it. So on the way home I'm going to go and take a picture of this uh, monument. There's some people sitting there reading what it says on the monument so I'll have to wait till they go and then I can take my photograph unless I ask them to just bugger off for a, a few shots oh come on how long does it take you to read a bloody monument oh blimey so as always I've come in the dark room and made a few prints I'll just show you those now the first one I did was the boat I quite like that it was quite a contrasty scene and obviously that film Kodak Double X is quite a punchy film I always find so that one's come out quite nice that print now and the second print I made was the ropes on the boat I quite like that shot the sun was blazing bright again so it was a bit tricky with all the different you know they had the highlights sitting there on those jugs which uh, was a little bit tricky in the dark room but I managed to overcome it a little bit and uh, made a nice print of that as well 
and up on Braden, down on Braden, all the cows went past them, took a photograph of the memorial that sits on the top there, stands quite high, and uh, that's come out quite nice as well. There's a print there of that that I made. And the last print I made was the T-Max 100 film, which was those reeds. I quite like that shot there. So I'm glad that one didn't get messed up with the light leaks. I'm not quite sure where they come from. It certainly wasn't the camera and I didn't load that film. So I don't know, it's film photography. These things happen, don't they? And the main point of the video was buying that Maxim 50 camera that I owned once back in 2004. And all this time later, I found one on eBay and went out and shot it again. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if the camera would work that well. Um, but you know what? It worked flawlessly. I can't fault it. Other than, you know, the uh, I found that the knob, the little um, control wheel, the little uh, jog, jog wheel, I noticed that when I'm trying to change the settings and stuff, it kind of has a mind of its own. It sort of jumps from here to there. But once it's set, it's set. And then you can go off and take your pictures. The other thing that stumped me was the <laughs> closing the back of the lid after loading the film. And it automatically defaults to ISO 25 if you haven't got a DX code on a film. I've never seen that before. So that completely threw me off. But other than that, I can't fault it at all. That lens even, I found that lens to be quite sharp. So, but of course you can go and buy a mechanical shin on CS that I've got. They're around about the same price as well, but not as much loaded up as that stuff with the autofocus, shutter priority, aperture priority, and everything else, you know, uh, for a beginner, I think it's a fantastic little bit of kit. And don't forget, you can change the lenses as well. So if you don't like that lens that I was using, uh, go for one of the other Minolta lenses. As long as it's A mount, it will fit that camera. And they're pretty cheap as chips as well on eBay that I noticed. I'm going to give that camera to my mate Gaz. Gaz hasn't got a film camera and he's always taking pictures on his phone and sending me them early in the morning uh, from different parts of the island. So Gaz, if you're watching, I'm going to give you that camera, mate, load it with film for you. You can keep it in your van and you can take some photographs and I'll develop them for you as well. So anyway, guys, let us know in the comments what your thoughts are of this camera. Did you once own one? Have you got one? What do you think of it? I think it's a fantastic starters camera for anyone wanting to get into film photography and it's not as expensive as, uh, you know, the Canon A ones and all the other usual suspects that are just seem to be rocketing in price lately. Right bargain I found. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for wanting to support the channel. I'll catch you next time. I'm going to have some dinner. See you later.